This is ENP Reports, a service of editor and publisher magazine since 1884, the authoritative voice of news publishing. Hi again, Mike Blinder, publisher of ENP Magazine, and today we're going to talk to the president of one of the largest state news media associations. We're going to speak with Brad Simpson, president of the Pennsylvania News Media Association. We'll ask Brad what's going on within the state, how are his members um, responding to the COVID-19 crisis, what ways are they dealing with uh, lobbying on those efforts, and what support is being offered to them. But we're also going to talk to Brad about an innovative project that the Pennsylvania News Media Association put together in aggregating COVID-19 content, not like we're doing here at ENP with America's newspapers, as we aggregate the content that publishers need to do their job better through this pandemic, but aggregating the content of their members into one statewide resource for the community to access with links and an amazing amount of information that is doing quite well. So let's get to work. Let's go one-on-one -on -one right now with Brad Simpson, president of the Pennsylvania News Media Association. Brad Simpson, an honor to have you with us here today. I assume you are not in your offices at, at the Pennsylvania News Media Association. You're coming to us from home today? I, I am coming from home. I'm locked away, uh, hopefully away from my three kids that will give me the 30 minutes. There you go. And I got my dog in my uh, studio with me as well. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but I'm a Pennsylvania-born guy. I did not. I'm uh, born and bred in suburban Philadelphia. Okay. Um, I know you're in Harrisburg. And one of the things I'm going to miss this year is I was going to come out and join you at America East, which uh, EMP had a big presence plan there this year. That must be very disappointing to uh, you. You sure did. And, and we were excited to have you. We were excited to have the, the 25 under 35 awards this year. Uh, we're getting a lot of positive feedback, but, uh, you know, it was, it was unfortunately right in the, the middle of it. Um, and, you know, scheduled March 30th to April 1st. And, uh, that would have been obviously impossible to have no matter what. Well, lots of Hershey's chocolate for someone else to eat. Because uh, for those of you that don't know, America East, I've been going to it for years, is an amazingly cool conference, but it's always held at the Hershey Resort, mm -hmm. um, which, I, which makes it even more exciting because as you walk into that incredible building, they actually blow the smell of chocolate on you and you get free chocolate. But that's not what we're here to talk about. It's an honor to have you with us. Of course, before we get into discussion about what the Pennsylvania News Media Association is doing now to help through this, um, I guess I call it turbulent times. Um, you are the, the executive director, president, I should say, of one of the largest uh, state organizations of, of newspapers, or I should say news media companies in the United States. What are you hearing from your members? What are you, what's the current um, buzz? How are they dealing with COVID-19? You know, it's no different than every, anywhere else across the United States. Uh, you know, the revenue declines of mm -hmm. 60, 75% are very real. Uh, but on the flip side, the positive side is that the consumption uh, of the, the product, of, of the news, uh, whether it's print, digital, or, or, you know, a lot of these uh, properties, our members have gone to newsletters, emails, you know, just have been so creative in, in ways to get the news out to the, their public, their, their, their population. Um, it has never been greater, you know, so that, that thirst and, and that need and that desire for the local news and how does this impact my community? How is this impacting my school district? How is this impacting the township um, has never been better. Uh, but on the flip side, the revenue piece is, is just down 60, 75 percent. And obviously that that's a, a real uh, a real burden. What about um, subscriber revenue or membership revenue? Are you seeing some growth there? Are, are papers taking advantage of that in Pennsylvania? We have. We have seen some uh, some some subscription growth. Uh, we've been very similar to, to lots of other media organizations that. Uh, you know, their, their paywalls have been uh, reduced or, or completely uh, freed up for the COVID uh, coverage. Uh, but, you know, we have seen an uptick in, in actual uh, print and digital subscriptions. Um, you know, some membership models, uh, we've seen 
just some great stories about just, uh, you know, personal donations. Uh, I've had a couple members, you know, ask their community for support. Uh, and they've had, you know, some, some great, you know, uh, people step forward and say, Hey, you know, this is, this is what I'm going to give you. I, I, I can't imagine not having this paper in my, my, my community. Especially at times like this. I think mm-hmm. everyone agrees that when a crisis occurs, um, and it's one like this that is hyper local in a lot of ways, the information they're craving, that it tends to make people think twice about what would the community be without that local news outlet. Um, are you hearing the, a difference between the smaller markets and the bigger markets when it comes to this? I mean, I used to love to go to Indiana, Pennsylvania. That was a customer when I was, you know, my consulting firm for years. And many do not know this, but the, uh, the birthplace of Jimmy Stewart, I don't know if you know that. Um, a market like that, where they're the only local news source, are you hearing even more uh, support than possibly in the bigger cities you have? Uh, it, it, it's, a, it's, it's everywhere, you know, everywhere. Mike, it's, it, it really is. I mean, the, the, the numbers, I mean, the, the, the one thing, and, and, you know, talking about Indiana and Mike Donnelly, a former chairman of ours and, and a great supporter of the industry, um, you know, I've talked to him repeatedly over the last, you know, six, seven weeks. And, uh, you know, he, he's been proud to get out there. He's been proud to, to have the, the, the community consuming his, his product. Um, but again, you know, he's faced with the same type of, you know, revenue crisis that everybody else is. And, you know, that's across the board. You know, I, I, I want to be sympathetic to everybody because we're all in this together. I mean, all industries are, are, are dealing with, you know, closures and, and revenue losses and stuff like that. But, you know, our, our industry, you know, is still putting out the product and, you know, we're still needed more now than ever. Uh, but that revenue piece, obviously, as I mentioned already, is a huge, huge uh, obstacle. Let's talk about uh, the lobbying you're doing in, uh, and yeah. the work you guys do. I mean, that's one of the things that I think people forget about state associations. They think in terms of, hey, they do a conference. You know, um, you guys are there. If I can use that term Dean Ridings came up with, we've got your back. Um, you've got our backs on the local level, which is very, very important. You're based in Harrisburg, I assume, mm-hmm. the state capital. Correct. What's currently going on as far as uh, representing the industry, uh, at least in your side of the story? We, we have a great in-house lobbyist, uh, Holly Lubert, um, mm-hmm. who is, you know, we, she's been with us for uh, over two years now, two and a half years now. Um, she is just absolutely fantastic at what she does. You know, the first couple weeks of the crisis, um, you know, when the, the, our, our governor, uh, Governor Wolf, uh, shut the, the Commonwealth down, um, you know, there was a lot of um, confusion as to what is essential, what's not essential, you know, where do we fall as a news industry? You know, the assumption was obviously the news industry is essential, but what does that mean for, you know, the advertising community? What does that mean for production? Yes, of course, reporters have to be out there and that is essential because we have to report the news. But when you look at the newspaper industry and, and all the facets that go into producing that, that, that daily newspaper or weekly newspaper, there's a lot of moving parts. And so, you know, working those angles with our, uh, the administration here, uh, Holly did a great job. We've had a lot of great uh, feedback from, you know, the administration within Harrisburg. Um, also been working with, you know, different state legislators, uh, senators, uh, house of reps, um, you know, on, on certain bills for, for access. And, you know, just like anybody else, we, we've seen a, a thirst um, you know, for that information, you know, for that public information, we have some, some state reps that, you know, are, are trying to get more information out of the administration um, in terms of to the waiver process that was put into place. Um, you know, so we're, we're working with them. Um, the state legislator, late legislature, you know, has, has pretty much all they're doing at, at this point is related to the COVID. Um, you know, lots of different bills uh, that are out there, um, as they pertain to, to certain elements of the COVID side. But yeah, we, you know, the lobbying side's never been busy, busier. Um, you know, one thing in particular, which, you know, you just don't even think about, you know, probably on a day-to-day basis is, you know, remote notaries, which in Pennsylvania was, was not allowed. And, and that, that touches a, a bunch of industries. Um, so that was one of the things, you know, right away that, uh, you know, we had to work through, uh, you know, the automotive industry had to work through a lot of, a lot of stuff that, you know, you need that physical notary to be present. Um, but when you have those shelters in place and essential, non-essential employees, um, or businesses, I should say, you know, that, that came up. So, uh, Holly's done a great job. We've had a great support. 
um, probably never been busier and, and, you know, a lobbyist, a lobbyist is such an extrovert and, and they're so used to being in the Capitol and, and dealing with the staff of, of the legislators. They're dealing with other lobbyists. Um, and, and, you know, it's totally been a, a change for her, you know, working from her home. Um, so she, she's really done a great job for us. Um, the other side of things, you know, on the, the legislative side of things is, is we have a, a legal hotline, which is almost always between lobbying and legal hotline is probably one of the, the best services um, as ranked by the members that, that we offer. And, and you can imagine that legal hotline has never been busier. Um, oh, sure. Melissa Maluski, you know, has been with us for many, many years. Um, mm-hmm. She does a fantastic job at that. Um, Katie Gavnon has joined us about a year ago, again, as a set another council. Um, they've just been fielding calls left and right um, in terms of, you know, what they are allowed to do, what they're not allowed to do, uh, public access issues, um, right to know issues. So uh, they've just done a great job. Can't be, can't be happier with the staff that, that, that I have in that regard. What about anything you're doing to support the national efforts, especially for the compensation issues? Uh, that we're going through, uh, you know, Dave Chevron is working on along with mm-hmm. Dean and the other larger organizations. You guys supporting that? Do you have any pipeline to help them out in D.C. with those things? You know, we are. Um, we, I, I've been in, in contact with Paul Boyle and Dean Ridings, you know, at, at News Media Alliance and uh, at America's Newspapers. I've, I've known those guys for, for a while. Um, so we've been supporting them. Uh, Holly has reached out to the federal officials within Pennsylvania. Um, you know, really pushing for the support, especially, you know, as it relates to the, the PPP program, as it relates to, to, to the advertising push that, that it is really getting, um, you know, starting to, to, to pick up some speed. And uh, so, you know, we, we've done a good job. Holly's done a great job with the, the local reps um, that you know, represent Pennsylvania uh, in Washington, D.C. All right. So let's talk about uh, the new exciting venture you're doing that um, you put a lot of energy into. Uh, when New Yang, our editor in chief, uh, showed me your press release. I was very excited that you've working on a hyper local level are pulling a lot of resources with a new platform called PA Corona News. Am I correct? Tell that us a little correct. bit more about that. Yeah, so this actually came uh, as an idea from John Durr, uh, who's the publisher at the Chestnut Hill Local. Uh, he reached out to, to Jane Hungartner, who runs our marketing, and said, Hey, I, I got an idea. And how about this? And so we met together as a team. Uh, threw some couple ideas up together. We work with an uh, organization locally that does a lot of our website uh, design and support. Um, and, and we created this PA Corona News uh, site, pacoronanews.org. And uh, what it is, is a one-stop source uh, so that the public can come to it, find uh, the local information as it pertains to each county. So if you click on Dauphin County, Harrisburg's in Dauphin County, any, any m- member organization uh, will be listed there. And then the, their link uh, to their website, uh, specifically to their Corona News website, if they have a, a page, a COVID page, uh, we'll go right there. Um, and I'm, and I'm, it, I'm assuming that many newspapers are, have, have aggregated their local content in one place. It's a no-brainer, right? I mean, yeah, they have. I mean, to the extent that they, they were able to, um, they have. And mm-hmm. so many, many link right to that page. Um, but so that's just a one-stop shop for the public. And then also we're, we're pulling articles every day and pictures um, specific to coronavirus articles uh, coverage um, and featuring those, you know, on, on the website. So, you know, again, it, it's just another way that we were able to aggregate the, the, the information across all our members in, into one site, but then still link it back to the individual newspaper so that they can get those uh, eyeballs on their side. See, this is great because one would think that you would have got, we built Media Virus Watch, but that was not built for the public. It's a very narrow audience of other publishers and state association directors like you, where we aggregate the content that those publishers would need. You took it one step further. You said, look, even though all these members are hyper local, people care about regions. Why don't we give a statewide location? How is this being promoted? How is the public finding it? And are you getting the traffic that you, you wanted to get now to it? Yeah, you know, on the traffic side, uh, I don't think we really had any 
grandiose ideas. I think we thought, okay, well, let's get a, a thousand, you know, can we get a thousand unique visitors? Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, we're up over 2,100 at this point. And, and this has been up for about two weeks now. Great. Um, you know, so we're about 2,100 unique visitors. We're about 5,000 page views. Um, you know, it, it is, it's great. We did the press release, as you mentioned. Um, we did some local outbound reach uh, to, to the papers. Um, we've done some uh, outbound reach. Also, you know, again, going back to the lobbying side, um, to the individual legislators to let them know that, that this is here and this is available. Um, and this is what we're doing, you know, for, for the Commonwealth and for the citizens. Um, so, a lot of, you know, some social, obviously, um, but, you know, pretty, pretty organic growth at this point. Um, are you finding any partnerships with any other media above and beyond just the member newspapers or, or any television, radio, anyone else kind of, you know, joining in and helping out with uh, uh, dispensing this information? Uh, not specifically to the PA Corona news, um, mm-hmm. but, you know, we have worked with our, our, uh, sister, uh, maybe not sisters is the right word, but, uh, cousin. the <laughs> yeah, cousin, uh, yeah. the Pennsylvania association of broadcasters, uh, we have a good relationship with, with them. Um, we've worked with them on, on a couple, uh, issues as they arise, um, and have, uh, you know, over the, you know, last two and a half months, you know, in terms of public access and press conferences of, of local officials and, uh, you know, trying to get the, the, the back and forth and, and, and the teleconferencing down, um, you know, as much as we possibly can. Um, so they're, they're a good organization and, and we work really well with them. We've had a great you know, relationship with them over the years. Uh, how much staffing and resources have you had to devote to this? And the reason I'm asking is a lot of other state uh, association managers, presidents, executive directors will be watching this. Uh, was it a, a nightmare to build? Was it easy? What, how, did, no. how did you do this? No, it, it, it really, it, it, it came from an idea to fruition um, in probably about two weeks. Excellent. Um, you know, a lot of it, maybe the first week w- was really working with our, our partners uh, that have developed our other website, our, our panewsmedia.org website. Uh, on the design and look and feel, um, we have a, a pretty robust, you know, membership database that, that already has this information available to us internally in terms of, you know, what counties uh, different organizations cover or are in. Uh, you know, some backfilling, you know, was necessary, uh, but it really was not as much work as it, it probably looks. Um, you know, we have had to go and continue to, to go on a daily basis, uh, you know, look at some different articles and, and fill those in. Um, but, you know, that that's uh, uh, hasn't really been the, that labor intensive. Excellent. So um, all in all, um, a nice turnkey way uh, to help reinforce the the message that newspapers do have your back, if I may. Are you supporting that campaign locally, the one that came out of America's newspapers? And uh, oh, oh, yeah. And we've, we've done our own uh, advocacy-type campaigns, okay. um, advertising campaigns. Um, again, you know, one of the, the member services that, that we've offered and have offered for you know, many years um, you know, are these specific uh, in-house ad campaigns that our members can run. Um, you know, about local news mattering. And, and you know, we did some uh, just regular PSA ads, you know, right when this crisis really started hitting about the, you know, the five steps that the CDC w- was recommending and made those available to, to the newspapers that they can, you know, download those and, and have their own, uh, you know, label them with their own uh, logo and, and, and our logos on there as well. So um, we, we've done a, a lot of that. We have you know, many channels in terms of getting that information out to our, our members. Great. That's, that's wonderful. Um, all right. So let's uh, look at the future, if we may. Um, what are you hearing? What do you think? Uh, any prognostications of how your state is opening up? Um, and who am I to speak? We're in Florida where no one's figured it out yet. Like some, <laughs> some are and some aren't. That's where I am located. But what's happening in Pennsylvania and what's, what do you think is going to be uh, the outcome of this in the next 30 days? Well, Friday, this Friday, the 8th, uh, 24 of our 67 counties um, will go from the, the red phase to the yellow phase. Yellow, um, okay. So it, it's a reduced reopening, um, but it is a reopening. 
uh, many of these counties, um, you know, for those that are unfamiliar with Pennsylvania, we're, we're basically a large rectangle. Yes. Um, so, you know, the, the Northwest uh, quadrant and, you know, a little bit stretching into the North central side of, of things uh, is going to be the, the areas that are reopening. So Erie, uh, State College, Williamsport, that type of area. Uh, you know, th- those will be reopening on, on Monday or Friday, I'm sorry. And, you know, what that means and what that looks like, uh, you know, still, I, I think we're all trying to figure that out. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the governor and, and the administration has, uh, you know, put some policies in place in terms of what, what that means for the other counties opening in terms of how many cases per 100,000 uh, in, in each county, um, doing it by regions. And, and there, there's many different variables there. So. I don't think we have a real good idea in terms of, you know, when the entire state's going to be open. Um, you know, Philadelphia being what the fourth biggest state, uh, city in, in, this, in the country, uh, you know, certainly has a, 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 a hotbed for activity or has been a hotbed for activity, um, you know, with infections. Um, so it, it's going to be, you know, probably another three, four weeks before we, I think we're seeing, you know, a little bit more of the reopening um, statewide. And you're obviously going to be one of the most critical states this November. Uh, there's no ifs, ands, or buts. Every, lots of eyes will be on Pennsylvania. We will uh, be. You're going to be one of those uh, swing one way or the others. Um, what's going on with newspapers and how they are looking towards uh, staying in business through the political season? I mean, with all the downsizing and all that and more, do you see, or is your energy, are you feeling some rehiring coming, hopefully? to some of those unfortunately furloughed journalists and what have you? You know, we have um, a little bit, you know, some of the organizations that were able to take advantage of the uh, stimulus uh, PPP, the payroll protection program uh, that did get those funds that were lucky to get those funds. Um, we have seen some folks being brought back. Good. Uh, you know, where we've seen, you know, a fair amount of the furlough workers or the laid off workers are your sports reporters, uh, your entertainment reporters, uh, which, you know, th- there obviously are no sports and there are very little, you know, there's no, there's no movie theaters open right now, at least in Pennsylvania. Um, you know, there's not concerts, you know, there's not a nightlife. Uh, so, you know, a lot of those reporters uh, you know, th- those were, were unfortunately the ones that, that were let go uh, the earliest. Um, those, like I said, those organizations that, that did, you know, take advantage of the PPP program, um, they have brought back, you know, employees that, that were laid off. Um, you know, there's, there's been some that, that have not laid off. There's been some that have done, uh, you know, a 20% cutback in pay or, or hours. Uh, and, you know, I, I think everybody's, you know, trying to take a wait and see in, in terms of, you know, how long does this stretch? Um, ad dollars being such a critical component of every media organization, you know, how long is it going to take for mom and pop to start advertising again that have been shut down for, you know, two months now? Are they even going to reopen, you know, some of these organizations that, you know, the small businesses that line Main Street, just like the rest of, you know, the newspaper does, you know, they've been impacted, you know, so great. And what does, what does that look like for them, you know, in the future when they're able to reopen, uh, you know, so a little bit of a wait and see, uh, but yeah, you, you, you hit it, you know, right on the head, the, the, the battleground in, in Pennsylvania is going to be pretty fierce. Uh, in November, we've done some, some programs uh, already. We have a, a political webinar uh, coming up on uh, next Friday for our members. Uh, you know, really looking from a revenue standpoint and, and how to reach, you know, the, the candidates uh, and their marketing teams, um, the political action campaigns that are going to be just unbelievable here in Pennsylvania, how to reach them. Uh, and then, you know, probably looking to do, uh, you know, some webinars from, for political uh, editorial coverage, you know, later in, in the June and July. Um, so it, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be something that, that's, uh, uh to, to, to be watched for sure you're, you're you know, gonna heading in the into the fall we will and, be and we based on be. some things i'm reading down here in florida may be up for grabs now as well i was, I was just about to say the same thing 
but here, this is, this is, I mean, I'm, I'm going to editorialize if I may, what the heck I am the publisher of the magazine, but darn it. Um, the most likely person to vote. And I just want all of our, the most likely person to vote is someone who consumes local news. Yeah. That is a fact. And one of the number one places that any political act, political action committee or candidate should be getting their message out is in local news websites and local news publications. It just, you know, and, and I think it's, it's going to be very interesting to see. I don't think anybody really has an understanding of what that means, but, you know, when you look at, especially in, in a presidential election, the, the, the rallies uh, that happen, you know, for the president, especially in a battleground state. Yeah. You know, I, I remember, you know, over the years, um, you know, when, when President Obama had his first campaign in 2004, and, you know, the, the mass of humanity that were at these rallies in, in Harrisburg and, and, and other areas throughout the state um, was just impressed. And, you know, it was so dynamic. But that's, that's I'm not sure that's going to be, you know, allowed. So how do you get that message out there? How, how do you... You know, how, how do you tell the, the community who you are and, 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 and what you mean uh, if you're not standing up on, on a podium in an arena or out on, you know, a, a public park? And so I think there, there is, you know, going to be an interesting, you know, feeling out period in terms of what, what does, what does, you know, what, what does, what does uh, campaigning look like in, in the rest of 2020? Um, and and that, that goes all the way down ballot, too. That's, that's not just the presidential election. Totally. Because, again, hyper-local. Well, again, um, if anyone wants to check out the, uh, the website, pacoronanews.org, correct? That is it. And if, any, if anyone else wants to check in with you, learn a little bit more about what you're up to, can you uh, let us have your email address? Yeah, sure. It's uh, brads, B-R-A-D-S, at P-A hyphen news n-e-w-s dot org there you go Brad, and there's a contact us page uh right on the the pa corona news website as well so excellent well we're honored to have you here we hope you stay well hope your family's you doing good your staff and all that and more so far so good so we'll keep crossing our fingers and and you know being well and uh congratulations again on a, a very innovative uh way to disseminate the the members news in a in a timely fashion um, we'll be staying in touch with you, and thanks again for being part of our uh, our uh, dialogue today. Absolutely, I appreciate it, Mike.